Hello, you're watching Deal Flow, the show where we keep you informed about the latest regional merger and acquisition trends. I'm Erica van der Madden, and thanks for joining us. South African listed equity is well into a bull market, yet with the exception of the listed property sector, South African companies have been reticent in considering listings. This looks set to change. We're talking this week to Colin Coleman, Partner Managing Director for Goldman Sachs International about the attractiveness of the market for listings and whether there are sectors that will receive particular favour for such listings. Before we get into that, let's check in with Jimmy Shaw for the deals of the week. Thanks, Erica. Now let's take a look at those deals. Morocco and Gabon have signed a $2.3 billion joint venture deal to construct fertilizer factories to serve Africa's growing agricultural market. Now the North African Kingdom is seeking to expand its investments south of Sahara. And the British telecoms group Vodafone Group has reached a preliminary deal to buy Spanish cable group Ono after raising its initial bid for the company. And this according to two people with knowledge of those discussions. And finally, Tencent Holdings Limited will buy a 15% stake in e-commerce firm JD.com for around $214 million as the two seek to challenge Alibaba Group Holdings, who holds a dominant position in the online shopping in China. Back to you. In studio with me, Colin Coleman, Partner Managing Director for Goldman Sachs International. So with the exception of the listed property sector, Colin, welcome. Um, it, it seems it's been pretty dry on the South African stock market. I think we had about 13 listings last year, of which one was outside of the property sector. Is this about to change? Yeah, uh, look, I think what's happened in the, the equity capital markets, at least, is there's been effectively over the last two years, two large uh, accelerated book build offerings two large rights issues and two, two large convertibles. So the IPO market, the listing market, has been relatively uh, vacuum, uh, in, in a vacuum. Uh, however, I think in the going forward, there are certain pressures that should bring about new listings. And those pressures are effectively driven by the 2007 uh, private equity boom. And you had you know, certain companies that are going to look for liquidity events. And liquidity events will be strategic sales, but also listings. And so you, you've had a number of those companies uh, like Edcon, Alexander Forbes, Prime Media and others uh, mentioned in the press uh, that are potential candidates. So what you're describing is the private equity industry with funds uh, uh, reaching maturity, needing to exit those funds, return those to investors. So in, in your mind, that would be a primary driver of listings. Outside of that, or is there any other impetus, given the valuations that we've seen, admittedly some sort of a disconnect between um, uh, the economics of it and, and the, the sort of capital inflows driving valuations higher. So it, beyond that, are the other uh, companies likely to list? So, so on a valuations basis, when you actually look at South Africa uh, in, the, in the current spot in time, our, our actual uh, valuations of both the whole market, the JSE, is around 14 times forward one year PE multiple, price to earnings multiple. Uh, the retail sector and the insurance sector, for example, are very healthy. They're trading at healthy levels, although retail has come off of late, it's still quite healthy. So I in terms of values at which uh, these companies can get uh, valuation multiples that are reflecting true value for the earnings that they are currently enjoying, uh, it's a good place in time. There's, there's nothing wrong with how the South African market is trading from a valuation point of view. Uh, so really the question is bottom up, are there new companies that are private companies looking for listings? You know, where are the discoveries, the Capitex, uh, these companies that have generated in the last 20 years? Uh, and so uh, actually I think there are a few companies uh, in that mode, uh, companies that have you know, developed from the ground up that are going to look for listings. I think it's going to be more the private equity uh, liquidity events that are going to drive the listings. And then Colin, what about the, the regional theme? Um, how realistic is it to perceive or, and describe the South African stock market as a platform for listing of, of African regional businesses? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I, I do believe that Johannesburg, you know, with a half a trillion dollars of assets under management, is a big pool of liquidity that African companies can use. Now, the fact is, 
the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is 80% of all liquidity and all equity trading on the whole African continent. So if an African company wants to use uh, a pool of liquidity, Johannesburg Stock Exchange is a great place to do it. Uh, but our real competitor is not the local markets, it's the London Stock Exchange. So some companies are going to look to the Lon London Stock Exchange, Nigerian companies for instance, uh, for listings before they do that with Johannesburg. So Johannesburg has to be, the JSE, has to be uh, aggressive in marketing itself as a listing location. Uh, we have had certain companies like Oanda list on the JSE, uh, but I'm hoping that that will, uh, that will multiply mm. in future years. Elaborate on what you meant by the JSE needing to be almost aggressive in the way it markets itself. Could, could it be doing some, some things differently? Well, you know, I, I, I interact with the New York Stock Exchange, the London Stock Exchange, uh, the NASDAQ, you know, and they have teams of people who come to talk to bankers about listing uh, their, the companies on their exchanges. And so the JSE has to do the same. I'm sure it is doing the same and mm -hmm. they have a very good team. Uh, and they had a focus on Africa. Uh, I think it, uh, you know, there's certain countries in Africa, say for example, Angola, that I'd love to see develop uh, equity exchanges, active, uh, you know, pragmatic equity exchanges where there's real liquidity. Uh, if you just take Nigeria, it's the next largest exchange. They only uh, have an eight, $80 billion market cap of all companies, and Dangote Cement is one quarter of that. But they only trade $20 million a day. We trade $2 billion a day on the JSE. So one would hope that in developing the African capital markets, the JSE plays an active role. And if you look at China, you know, China had no equity exchange many years ago, and today it has a very large uh, equity exchange and functioning, uh, you know, a share market and, and functioning onshore market. Yeah. Uh, and it's very important that countries like Angola, like Nigeria, like Kenya, develop the depth and liquidity of these exchanges. Colin, going back to uh, sort of the, the drivers of, of possible listings over the next two years, uh, my understanding is what you said, it's almost circumstantial, the kind of companies that we're seeing listing. So is there no sort of industry theme of, of say, financial sector, retail sector coming to the market seeking funding through a listing? Not really. I, th I think that it, it is circumstantial. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that retail, um, you know, and it's not, uh, it's retail and financial services is not... Um, uh, it's not surprising that those are the sectors where listings are coming because we have seen massive growth in the services sector in South Africa. Mining is an area where they're going to raise capital but for uh, repairing balance sheets or for developing uh, mines uh, further. Uh, but it's not new companies coming to the market. The new companies uh, or the private companies that are going to look for uh, for this is mainly in the services sector, yeah. be it financial property or retail. Colin, at the beginning I referred briefly to the property sector, listed property in South Africa, and we've seen the boom over what, two, three, four, five years even if you go back. Do you think that there's an element of possible overvaluation in our listed property sector? Um, not, not really. If I look at the property sector, I haven't seen that overvaluation. As I say, the South African market looks fairly well valued. The truth is, you know, when you look at, for example, the insurance sector where our insurance companies are trading uh, at or over embedded value, Discovery and Sunlum, for example, trading just above embedded value. These are, by global comparables, very well traded companies. They tra they, these companies traded healthy multiples. And this reflects the fact that we have really advanced good uh, managements uh, if you take Sunlum and Discovery, these are really well managed companies. You know, the depth, the sophistication of these companies uh, have been rewarded in the multiples that they enjoy. And they're well known when you speak to international investors, the South African managements are very well regarded. If you talk about a ShopRite, an MTN, uh, any of these companies are very well regarded managements. So I think, um, you know, particularly as we approach the elections on 7th of May, uh, the international investors are going to watch uh, for how the macro issues play out. The micro issues around where does, you know, the deep value investors, where is the deep value uh, in South African stocks? Uh, and then, you know, the hedge funds will be looking for arbitrage opportunities, mm -hmm. for example, in the credit space. Uh, this is how I think things are going to play out a little bit. Uh, the new listings, I think uh, the one interesting thing is because the South African capital markets are so deep, you know, listings up to, uh, you know, a half a billion dollar uh, of 
new capital raise can well be done within the South African capital markets. The tension, the pricing tension will come from the international investors buying into those situations. Uh, and they will tend, the marginal buyer tends to send the price, set the price. Uh, and so it's very important that you have both tapping the South African capital markets and the international buyers in order to set your best price for the and, listings. And the sentiment drivers, uh, the granularity of that might be quite different for, say, US and European investors. We uh, I just saw over the weekend US investors are amongst the most afraid at the moment. So maybe relating the next question to that, what are the risks for, say, a South African-based business uh, seeking a listing in this market over the next two years, if, if you think of the possible vulnerability to shifts in sentiment? Well, I think, you know, the biggest risks are macro risks. So you know, some big disruption to the global markets. You know, if people are watching Ukraine uh, and, and the events in around Russia and Ukraine and, and, the, and uh, you know, how that might conflagrate uh, Europe in general, um, they're watching that closely. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, the emerging market space is one where as the Fed tapers back, there's going to be some volatility. Uh, and so I don't expect at this point in time that there's going to be any major macro disruptions, uh, but that will be, as you go into a listing, that'll be one of the major events. Remember, listings take about six months. And so, you know, it's, you know, you're going to go through a period of uncertainty from the point of starting your planning to the execution and the closing of a transaction. And those are the macro events that you, yeah. you cannot plan for. It goes back to the advice we get over and over uh, on this channel from, from experts. It's about maintaining a medium to long term horizon, not being afraid of the short term fluctuations. And if, going back to your point on the African regional story, I mean, th that is what's going to support our market ultimately. Look, the Africa story of superior growth, 5.5 to 6.5%, depending on how you see it, is very strong. The South African story, turbocharge, good, good governance, good managers. Uh, you know, an annuity stream in the South African market with upside from Africa. These are strong themes. Uh, so I think, you know, with the good, good governance and good management in these companies uh, and the depth of the liquidity in the stock exchange and in the local asset management community supplemented by the emerging market buyers, yeah. uh, you know, there's a good, the good reason to be confident. Good talking to you, Colin. Thanks for coming in. And that's it for this week's edition of Deal Flow. Our thanks to Colin Coleman. He's a partner managing director for Goldman Sachs International. Do tune in again next week, same time to get the latest news and views on mergers and acquisitions. Until then, from me, Erika van der Madwe, it's goodbye.